Welcome to the Addiction Solution Podcast. I'm Michelle Dunbar. Enjoy listening and watching as addiction experts Mark Sheeran and I cover controversial as well as helpful topics on addiction, how to move past it, and other related subjects. As two of the co-founders of the Freedom Model, Mark and I will give you a completely new perspective on the topics that matter to you. We will take to task the Recovery Society's lies and misinformation and replace them with facts, research, and the methods to move on from addiction struggles without 12-step meetings, rehabs, and the shackles of endless recovery. Let's escape the treatment and recovery trap together and learn to be free. Welcome to the truth. We're so happy to have so many wonderful fans, viewers, and listeners to the Addiction Solution Podcast. We know that many of our listeners are seeking a solution to addiction for themselves or someone they love. So let me tell you about our Freedom Model online program. It's like no other program for addiction in the world. The Freedom Model online program, or FMOP as we call it, was made for those who still want to be able to learn a solution, but do it on their own, in the privacy of home and on their schedule, but with guidance from the addiction experts who developed the Freedom Model. FMOP consists of more than 65 video lessons taught by Mark Sheeran and me. We're the co-developers of the Freedom Model. The program includes additional lessons not included anyplace else. They are the mind and brain, the binge construct, and life movements. You also get the Freedom Model for the Family online program, the 12-step deprogramming seminar series, which people love, new quick lessons taught by certified Freedom Model coaches posted each week, the Freedom Model monthly newsletter, and a two-hour live question and answer coaching session with Mark and myself on the last Wednesday of every month. And FMOP is affordable. For just $450, you have access for the first month. And if you feel you need more time, you can maintain your access for just $49.95 for each additional month. You can enroll in FMOP today at thefreedommodel.org. Or if you have questions about our products or services, call us at 888-424-2626. We are happy to help. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Addiction Solution Podcast. I'm Michelle Dunbar. And I'm Mark Sheeran. And uh, this is the first time we've recorded in a few weeks. Yeah, we were ahead for a while. (laughs) We were. But we have got probably, it's going to be our best episode ever. Yeah, so... (laughs) So there's there's some things happening. First of all, the podcast has become enormously popular. This podcast. So thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We we and we've been talking to the public more and more because of the, our new TikTok accounts, and um, we're inundating the 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 web and social media with our content, short videos. Yep. And um, YouTube. We got a bunch of shorts now. Yep. So so in this process over the last couple of months where this is sort of taking off now, uh, the freedom model, right? Internationally, we're talking to people in Australia, Britain, Germany, New everywhere. It's, yeah, it's cool. It's really cool. Um, so what we've been, what we've been talking about is AA, a lot about, uh, debunking AA, deprogramming from AA that people are trying desperately to, to get rid of their indoctrination. And one of the the thrusts of that effort that we've been doing is talking about the fact that it's a cult, yeah. which is very strong language. It's a, it's an accusation that you don't just toss around uh, groups of people because there are lots of organizations that aren't cults that get called them. Yeah. And uh, they get criticized because of their stance on a topic or something and, the, and they're wrongly accused. And, um, but I have been somebody that's been saying AA is a cult and so is Michelle for many years Yes, uh, because we lived through it. We lived through, we grew up in it. That's right. We, we were in doc, we came from indoctrinated families. Um, and it was, it was, uh, really awful. It was really awful. So when we talk about it in something like TikTok, you, you throw out the accusation, right? You say, this is, this is what it is. It's a cult. And then you have a minute to do to make a point that that isn't very nuanced, you know. And so people get really pissed off. I get so upset. And <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to remember though, like when we were in AA, if somebody had called it a cult, I'm not sure I would have cared. You know, I think that we were in the last vestige of its heyday, and nobody would have dared. No. 
I don't oh, think you, I, nobody would have called it that. Yeah. Then. But, I, but I'm like, I'm, I was trying to remember, like, I think I would have been like, oh, that might be right. I think that I, it depends on when. Yeah, true. true. I would have defended it because when you're in AA and you're a part of it, you're already embarrassed a little bit yes. behind the scenes by the fact that you're in this weird society and you know something's yeah. not right. Yeah, I was not forthcoming with that information to yeah. people on the outside, right? Yeah. The normies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. which we are now the normies. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, it was a weird thing. So we make the accusation. People get pissed off because when you're in it, the whole point of a cult is that you don't think you don't challenge it. So anyway, people people don't seem to understand why we say it. Right. And we can't make really deep arguments in things like TikTok or Reels or any of these sort of social media places. So we said, listen, we made some announcements. We're going to talk about it in the podcast. And we what we did was we took the one of the official um, declarations of what a cult is. There are several versions of it, but it all says the same thing. And there are criteria. I don't know how many are there. How many are there? One, no. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13. 13. And this is from the, the Cult Awareness Network. Right. So check in, uh, checklist for the characteristics of a cult. Yep. How do you know you're in a cult? Right. And um, so I, Michelle and I went through the list earlier and I said, you know, some of these are going to apply. Well, it ends up that AA applies to every, all 13. All 13. <laughs> So I think that that the amount of information that I have and that Michelle has, this may turn into two podcasts. Yes, but I'm not sure we're going to get through all of this in a half an hour. So, right, and I want to. So this may be part one. <laughs> yeah, I want to stick to a half hour though. Yes, because for sure. I'm going to pack in a whole ton of information Ooh. in this half hour. Okay. Okay. So let's start at the list. The first, the my first glasses. item. Yeah, I didn't bother with my glasses. Yes. So. The group is focused on a leader to whom members seem to display excessively zealous, unquestioning commitment. Okay. Uh, that's an easy one, right? Now I'm going to do most of the talking and Michelle's going to have to jab me when and tell me to shut up when she has a point. Yeah. I'm loud enough. I can, I can get your attention. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, so who's the leader? Well, there are two leaders of AA, but really there was one. There was... Uh, Dr. Bob, who was sort of on the side, Dr. Bob Smith quiet. Uh, from Akron, Ohio. And then, and he was a, a right wing fundamentalist Christian, uh, and, a physician. yeah, a physician, a proctologist and, and, uh, uh, just sort of a blue collar doctor back in the day, you know, yeah. made house calls and did surgery and stuff like that, but was a massive drunk and his whole life fell apart. Okay. So we get that. Then there was Bill Wilson, who was really the architect of the cult. And Bill Wilson, in in our Freedom Model online program, I go through this in detail. So if you want to understand Bill Wilson, join Freedom Model online program because that uh, seminar series that I do really gets into the money aspect of Alcoholics Anonymous, and I and I go through the whole history. This piece that we're going to do today is more geared towards just cult characteristics. But if you want to know the history of Bill Wilson and that whole thing, that context, that angle, then get the online program and you can watch that video series. Um, so, so people's it, pilgrimage yes. to his home. Yep. I mean, he's been dead since 1971, but they they bring their chips. They have this whole pilgrimage thing like you would go to Israel. That's You right. know what I mean? Like to walk in Jesus's footsteps. People do that with Bill Wilson. They call him a prophet. Yep. Uh, that when you go to his grave site, which isn't very far from his home in East Dorset, Vermont, uh, first of all, you can do a tour of his house and which is very weird, by the way, I've done all this. <laughs> and then, and not. then you say, you know, they have a piece of paper and they, at least this is what it was in 1994. They give you a piece of paper that has directions to his grave site. And when you walk, there's a path worn in the grass and then his grave site, at least in 1994, I don't know anymore, but was piled with chips. So, and it was creepy. Yeah. Um, that was just, at that point, I thought this was really, really, really freaking odd. Um, <laughs> but I was totally immersed in it. At, that's at the peak of when I was full of shit and, right. and part of the cult and really promoting it, trying desperately to believe that there was some value in it, but knowing in my heart that this was a Something dead Something was wrong. Yeah, it was a dead Something was wrong. And there is another little small part of this. In in different communities, and we've seen this here personally, but in different communities, sometimes there's a guru. 
mm-hmm. an AA guru that is like the grand poobah of the of the little community, the AA community. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's been a couple. Um, we know a lot of people from the West Coast, and everybody talks about Clancy, right? You know, and Clancy's group, and Clancy's group, and and so sometimes there's these sub cults within with specific leaders and everybody is like, Oh, this person is, uh, they raise them to a level of deity. Yeah. Um, so, so it happens at that level too, because a lot of people are saying, Oh, who's the leader? He's not alive. Well, yeah, but he still lives on through the book. Alcoholics Anonymous. Well, when it, yeah. So one of, so one of the ways in which this manifests itself is the first 164 pages of hit Bill Wilson's text, which is the cult manual. And I'll get into that later. There's so much to cover. It's unbelievable. God, As I go through it, I'm overwhelmed by the amount of It might of be, have to be like three yeah. podcast episodes. It, it might. Um, but, but you know, the first 164 pages hasn't changed uh, with the exception of a couple of small words that they right. changed between editions. Uh, the stories in the back of the big book, some of them have changed and morphed and evolved. But the actual cult manual, how to create a pyramid scheme, mm. um, how to recruit, how to indoctrinate your family, how to even indoctrinate your employer uh, and in the business world, all of that has remained static since 1939 when it was written. All of it is Bill Wilson's fantasy. Yes. All of it was written by him. I even have a document, a book, and a website where I have the actual manuscript where it was written in and what they changed and how they changed I it. Remember the, that. the actual handwriting. I have it on my hard drive. The actual handwriting of where the manuscript was there and they changed things and they took God and out of here and they placed it here and there's arrows. And I have that document. And and it's really fascinating to look at because of how utterly twisted <laughs> it is and and how manipulative oh yeah uh, bill was um i go into that in more detail in my seminar series which you can get but um yeah so he's a deity the book is an unchanging document yep uh it can't you can't it it is looked at as a god-given program equal to the bible i've heard that in meetings many times um and that he was prophetic Oh, and by the way, he also picked the number 12, the 12 steps oh. because of the 12 apostles. And he wanted it to match up to Christianity. And you notice everything is 12 and it's 12 traditions. That's so right. You know, it's, everything's 12. That's right. And the 12 concepts of service even. Oh, if right, you want to go right. into the corporate end and how he manipulates even the corporate end. There was a time when I sued AA because they slandered me and Jerry in a very, very heinous way. Yeah, and we were in court with them for, for years. Um, and uh, when you d- dig deep into their corporate structure, it's frightening. It's, it's really frightening how weird it gets behind those uh, GSO doors, the general service mm-hmm. office in Manhattan. All right. The second characteristic of a cult is the group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. That's its only purpose. It's the only purpose. <laughs> it's, it's, I mean, we, it, that AA fulfills you that. You have to give it away to keep it. That's right. And the only way to keep it is to give it away. And they say it in every different way yep. that your sobriety is dependent on your service to others, that only an alcoholic can work with another alcoholic. Well, who made that rule? What happened before Bill Wilson for the eons, the millennia that mankind has existed on this planet and drank alcohol? uh, Did everybody die? Did everybody die if they didn't serve each other? That the did every alcoholic, which is a made up term, by the way, there is no such thing as an alcoholic. But but what he did was he created a separate subpar class of human, a subset of humans called alcoholics or drug addicts. Then he narrowed it down so that you stopped getting help from anybody else. And he said, you only one alcoholic can work with another. There is no other way in which somebody can work and be effective, which is a lie. And, and, and then he created the entire, uh, destruction of ego. You know, I'm going to make sure that when you work with somebody, you crush their ego at depth, ego deflation at depth, which is how you break people down. That's a hazing process that cults use which we'll get into more 
more later. So yeah, it's, it, it fits this in spades. <laughs> okay. The group is preoccupied with making money. Well, that's its second. Uh, really, that was probably its first goal. Bill, Bill had he a couple to make money. Yeah, he he wanted to be the guru, which there's nothing wrong with, by the way. No, there isn't. But but when but he's a liar, right? Because what Bill did was he said there's no dues or fees, right? And everybody points that on TikTok. It's hilarious. Oh my god, it's so you funny. know it's free. It's there's no it's dues free. or fees. It's free. But here's what's interesting. If it's free, then how come they have $14 million in their prudent reserve account? How come they have a budget that's, that's you know, multi-millions every year? Why is it that- How come they don't give away their books? Yeah. How come they don't, they don't give away, how come they don't stop passing the basket around? How why, come there are not free rehabs that offer AA? Right. Why is, why is every rehab, or at least 85% of all rehabilitation- based on the 12 step model and why is it that a, an alcoholics anonymous book sits on every bed in in those rehabs, rehabs when you show up you know um is it possible that that was preconceived by by bill why yes it was it was actually uh, shock among shocks ding, ding, ding. <laughs> So you can read about that in AA Comes of Age, how he, he had a vision of exactly Brilliant. what has happened today. So yeah, there's no dues or fees that are required, but what he did was he made sure that the books were always available. His cult manual, on, which is the recruitment manual, is available to every single person that comes to a meeting. He knew that it didn't work. Because and he talks about the fact that it didn't work, especially in his his groups were an abysmal failure for four years when he wrote the book, and then he said that a hundred men and women actually got sober. They didn't. He made all of it. He just lied. He just lied, <laughs> and he put the lies in print, and it became truth. Right. Um, it's really fucked up. So, uh, so anyway, it's, it's it's so look it. They make money. Okay, AA makes money. Two million members on average, yep. going to meetings every single day, putting a dollar in the basket yeah. every single day. So what, where that money goes, because I became a treasurer and Me I became an, a district manager and I, I got into this whole hierarchy of, yep. just, I became an area secretary. I was that for four years. So, so what happens when your treasurer is they collect the dues or fees, you pay for the coffee. Usually a bunch of money gets stolen because everybody's drinking and carrying on, <laughs> which is why you don't get $2 million a day. But Bill knew that there was a loss, you know, yeah, and, sure. and, he, and all this was factored in. But he knew that if for every $10 that was put in the basket, if he got two of it to be sent to, to the home district office, which is now a general services office, if he could just get that, all he needed was bodies. That's it. That's it. And, and, and that's where he created the working with others chapter the two employers, two wives. These are all the different chapters to make sure that there would be a constant recruitment. And then he made sure that the book was put in every rehabilitation center throughout the, the country. And he also knew that he had to get it to be a disease, to get the insurance dollars, because then the big pools of money would flow eventually, even Millions if it was a trickle millions. out of that system into the AA system. And it's a remarkably inefficient, but efficient model. I mean, inefficient by the fact that People They're, don't get better. People don't get better. That's a right. Great, that's a great. I mean, point. that's <laughs> that, to, uh, to nobody. Nobody changes. I mean, they they but they but it's a great money making model because they circulate through the system. The same person circulates through the system sometimes indefinitely until they die. That's right. So that's or the, until they figure it out, which so many people do. That's right. So so Bill knew it was inefficient in this way monetarily. The bulk of the money was going to go to treatment, the treatment centers. But if he could just get the bodies to show up at meetings afterwards and before treatment. Yes. So treatment has an agreement and it's, and it's so many generations deep now that nobody even knows how this all worked or how this all started in the fifties and sixties with, with these arrangements. But, but the way it works is rehabil AA sends people to treatment or treatment gets the average Joe off the street. Then AA is taught to them. AA becomes free aftercare, free aftercare. They buy the book. They got another book in the rehab. So they're indoctrinated in the entire model. They're told it's necessary for their sobriety and their life or else they, yeah. they have jails, institutions, or death, which is another thing we'll be covering later. And then they fail in AA. 
they go back to rehab. And that is what's called in behind the scenes in, in the uh, treatment industry as the revolving door policy. They want that policy to, you're in the trap. And now they have med medically assisted therapies that keep you thinking that you're forever going to crave. And so you're now on lifelong medications and, and really you never get out of the trap. And it's designed. And as long as you just keep putting the dollar in the basket, 50 cents, buy a book, get your friend to come, you know, start working with other alcoholics in some desperate plea that that's the only avenue to your sobriety. That, my friends, is a cult. Yep. Because it's completely manufactured by Bill Wilson's fantasies. And he died a multimillionaire. And, and it's so insidious that... I don't care who you are. If if you go to a me if you show up at a meeting, and you're just curious, you're not sure. You're like, you know, I'm drinking like I binge drink on Friday and Saturdays, and I get really drunk, and I don't feel like I have control. You qualify if you're somebody that has two drinks a night every single night, and you feel like you need those two drinks a night. You qualify <clears throat> if you're somebody that once got so drunk you got a DWI but you haven't drank since you qualify. So, so it's set up. So everybody qualifies. Yeah. I always said all roads lead to AA. Yeah. Exactly. It all just gets there. Exactly. So, yep. Recruitment. Let's see. What, okay. We're at 18 we're minutes. <laughs> questioning doubt or questioning doubt and dissent are discouraged or even punished. Well, this look at go to AA today tonight if you're in it and say i'm i'm moderating my drinking and i, <laughs> and I love it and i recommend that <laughs> i'm totally in control it's bizarre yeah i'm totally <laughs> in control and anybody can be in control now that's a fact yes that's an actual fact oh my god i wouldn't do that, that in a meeting that that somebody can do that that anybody can do that and that loss of control is a myth those are facts mm -hmm that the research bears out that Bill Wilson rallied against and made sure was extinguished. But if you want to see how the cult works, oh. that's all you got to say. I had my whole life destroyed for eight years by AA members. Literally, if I told you the things they did, it, oh. you'd be astounded. Um, because I said that I had moved on from the problem that I recovered and I moved on. Yes. And that scared oh, the shit. I remember. Shit. Yeah. I remember yeah, they wrecked when your you life and, too. But yeah. You, well, well, because I was Cherry's daughter. I wasn't as outspoken as Mark and my father were about being recovered. In those days you weren't. No, I right. wasn't. I was very fearful, actually. It was hard enough being Jerry's daughter, um, let alone, yeah, you know, being a like um, kind of heretic in the rooms. And, but there was a, there was, a couple people, well, yeah, people were so mean. They were just so mean. And, but there were, but the thing about it was, I never understood at that point in time why you guys were so outspoken about it. But then I saw, like, after the meetings, people will come and go, I want that. Yeah, they did. You can be recovered. You're okay. Like, how does that work? Like, people wanted to know. They were hungry, desperate. Desperate. Yeah, sad lost. I mean, and it hurt my heart. It yeah. hurt my heart to see them struggling that because I did. Yes. You me know? too. Yeah. Me too. So, so yeah. Or, you know, just, I mean, shoot, you can go into a meeting. If you've ever gone into a meeting, I can remember the first uh, few meetings I went to, I wouldn't call myself an alcoholic. Try to do that. Try to not introduce yourself as an alcoholic. Holy crap. Yeah. Say uh, it, my name is Mark. So I would say, hi, I'm Mark. And then and what are you? Everybody will yell. What, well, what are you? You know, what are you? I'm a dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm a human being. I'm a human being that has a thought in my own mind, yeah. you know, my own autonomy. I don't have to, you know. I don't have to label myself. Follow group think. Yep. Yep. So yeah, if you don't believe us about these things, go in and try some of this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's go to the next one. The leadership dictates sometime in great detail how members should think, act, and feel. For example, members must get permission from leaders to date, change jobs, get married. Leaders may pres pres prescribe the types of clothes to wear, where to live, how to discipline your children, and so forth, how to wear your hair. Jesus Christ. Look at what TV shows to watch. Every single thing about AA is that describes it. <laughs> 
perpetuity. What sponsorship is. Yes. It's also, I want you to think about the 12 steps is like baking a cake, making human beings not human beings. Right. Here's why. What makes somebody quit drinking for good on their own without AA's influence is a completely autonomous process within the confines of that individual's mind. They come up with reasons and they change their life. And this mm -hmm. is a common thing. What AA says is, no, no, you're not allowed to think that way. There's one way. And you've got to start from step one, go to step 12, and then recruit. Because 12, the 12th step, by the way, is the recruitment step. Yes. All right. Amongst many other ways in which they manipulate you to, to recruit. Um, so it's like baking a cake. We describe it in our book, The Freedom Model for Addictions. It's like baking a cake. Well, humans aren't cakes. They're not inanimate things to be manipulated with 12 steps that every time they're going to work this way. That right. is a cult, folks. Yes. Okay. And there are plenty of other cults within the world that have this characteristic, but AA is unbelievably dogmatic this way. So, so you have what Michelle talked about with sponsorship, right? Yep. Yep. And it then, and then the 12 steps themselves are, and the 12 traditions are. And but it goes further than that. It goes further than that. I can remember, and I may have, I, I probably talked about this in other podcasts, but, but there's this. Oh, this recommendation, you can't get involved in a relationship in the first year. You can't make any major changes in yeah. your life in the first year. You should ask your sponsor, you know, for whether or not you should do these things. And so when I, my first two months I was in AA, I'm not somebody that follows the rules. I never have been. Right. And especially if they don't make sense to me, I don't get it. And for me, like changing my life, I wanted to move on. I quit my substance use so I could get on with things. Yeah. Right. So, so once I, I did everything I was supposed to do, I got involved in a relationship very early on within the first six weeks. It's called being in love, by the way. Yeah. I fell in love. So, I mean, I wasn't calling it that right then, but, but yeah, we, you know, we got together. Well, once we did it on the down low at first, which was kind of exciting, right? And then though, when people found out a group of guys took my husband, who he's now my husband, we've been together all this time. He took my husband um, on a drive to talk to him and a group of and women. To discipline him. Discipline him. I was part of me. all that nonsense. <laughs> and a group of women took me. And we heard things like, you're killing each other. Yeah, it's so weird. Like you're killing each other. It's so weird to me now. <laughs> like, like I mean, how is how is being in love going to kill somebody? I, I mean, it's so crazy. I know. Like, did, and then you hear the horror stories. Did you hear what happened to Connie and Matt? They got together and bam, Connie's dead. She overdosed. Like, and and, and here's the deal: Connie and Tommy, or whatever, whoever <laughs> that you know. They would have found somebody at the bar and it would have been better. I mean, the, here's the point. Who gives a shit? Let right. people live the way they want to live. Right. It has, it, it, it really doesn't matter. But it's all about this micromanaging. That's right. I also went back to college way against my sponsor's wishes. I'm like, I'm 20, I'm going, I'm almost 23 years old. I should be going to college. I should finish school. No, that's too stressful for you. I changed jobs. No, that's too stressful for you. But I'm making twice as much as I was making at the previous job. Do you see what I'm saying? Like people literally put their lives on hold for what? For what? To sit and white knuckle it one day at a time? To recruit. To recruit because that's your full-time job. That's right. Thank put, God. Put recovery first, Michelle. Yes. You have to put your recovery first. I watched my mom abandon oh, all God, us kids. So true. You know, that she had and 12. Truth is my dad did too. Yeah. She had 12 kids and recovery. And my mom was never home. And then eventually yep. she left. Yep. Because yep. recovery was, had to be number one. Yeah. My bullshit. dad was never home. My mother will say to this day, he was a much better husband drinking. Yep. Then he was sober. Once he got sober, it was all, I mean, when he was drinking, he was home. We had, we did things together. We went on vacations. Once he was sober, that all stopped. That all stopped. Everything was about AA and his, and his career and his, his life and how that all his recovery was top priority, at least for a period of time. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it wasn't until my mother left that he and my his father died, and my mother left that he started questioning everything, everything. So I think we have time for one more, one more. Um, I think the group is elitist. Oh, yes. Oh, God, that's so good. The group is elitist, claiming a special exalted status for itself, its leaders, and members. For example, the leader is considered the Messiah or an avatar. The group and or the leader has a special mission to save humanity. Well, all you have to do is, is follow any discussion about Bill Wilson, any biography, um, any any public discourse on the guy and they believe and he believed he, he literally believe believed that. that he was put on this earth had his to spiritual save humanity that's right to save humanity to save the drunks to bring this the message of god through him and his 12 steps mm. uh to humanity he was the moses he was the jesus christ he was the buddha and and then he would he would say, oh, but that's my ego talking and chuckle it off. But he, it's like, you can't unring the bell. You know, yeah. you can't, he'd say, he'd say on the one side, yeah, I, I am all this. Oh, but I'm just kidding. You know, yeah. because he knew, he knew that if he, if he continued to talk about it the way he really believed it, that people would know the jig is up. This guy's crazy. But it's not just him. I mean, going to meetings for as long as we did, there is a feeling sometimes in the rooms of we're special. Uh, the specialness is baked into it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like we're, I mean, I, I would hear people say, I thank God every day for all of the, you know, the, the drinking and drug using I did, yeah. all the horrors I've done, because I wouldn't have found this wonderful, special place to be with all of you wonderful people. I mean, there's, there's That's so it. much of that, that, there is this elitist feel when you're a member. Oh yeah. Yeah. They talk about the normies and they yes. chuckle, they chuckle. And there's, there's what I call junkie pride, you know, oh, let, yeah. let's, let's, let's tell our story. Let's embellish it. And let's see who has the worst junkie stories. And they're seen as the greatest recovery stories ever. You know, and it's this weird competition that happens. It's embarrassing to if, me now. If you want to see it, play out in real time. There are celebrities with recovery podcasts all over the place um, who, who talk like that, who talk about, you know, being in the, being part of this elite, wonderful recovery, but you know, people in recovery group. And it's, it's really, if, if you take a step outside it and then just look at it, like you were a Martian from another planet, it would be bizarre. Yeah. You know, truly yeah. bizarre. So, and I can remember one last thing. I can remember starting to believe that anybody who drank alcohol or took a drug was an alcoholic and an addict. I remember starting to think that way, like wondering, why does anybody drink alcohol? Why does anybody, anybody that wants to feel a buzz, they're an alcoholic. Right. Like, that's not true, people. That's not true. <laughs> True, well, even a not, little bit. There's no such thing. Yeah, there's no there's no set of defining characteristics that makes somebody an alcoholic. That was made up. It's all made it's up. It's just made up. So get rid of the labels. Let's end on a good note. Yes. Get rid of the labels. Don't go to meetings. Let yourself grow past this and and never label yourself by something you used to do. Why would you define yourself by something that was horrendously bad? a bad time in your life, yeah. right? Most people would want to just move on from that. And you can. Well, and, you can. and look, there are people who say, but I go to a meeting once in a while because I like the company. I like the people there. I get to meet great people. You can literally meet great people anywhere, anywhere. You don't have to join a cult to do it. That's it. That's it. So that's how we're going to end. Now, remember, we have a couple services we offer. At the beginning and the end of this podcast are commercials for those services, but I'm just going to tell you a little bit about um, the Freedom Model online program. 
is a wonderful option for people who want to stay home and have Mark and I, if you like our podcasts, you'll like the Freedom on Online program, okay? And you could stay home and it'll guide you through uh, the book. It has additional lessons in it, great lessons, the mind and brain that Mark does, uh, the binge construct, life movements. It's fantastic. Not only does it help people to solve addiction, but it can also help you to fully deprogram this is a big deal because I consider it the official deprogramming guide of, of the 12 steps. Yeah, deprogram. And and within the month that, you, that you're that you doing the program or as long as you be, say a member of, of the online program, you can get the opportunity to talk with Mark and I live in a two-hour um, basically coaching Q&A. session. It's yeah. a Q&A. Um, and only members, only people that are involved in the program get to come on there and do that. Um, and we get like, you know, four or five people, um, <laughs> and we'll just talk right to you. It's, it's, a it's a lot of fun, it's fun. actually. It's fun. So, so check it out. The freedom model.org. You can find out about all of our services. All right, everybody. So thanks everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Take care. Hey, so this was part one. Next time we will do part yeah, two. Yeah, let me and, mark where we stop. Yep, and okay. finish uh, the, the cult. <laughs> Why is a cult? How do we know? All right, take care. Bye. Are you seeking private personalized coaching to solve your addiction? Do you want to move fully past your addiction without endless meetings, therapies, and rehabs? Some of you might also want to deprogram from the 12-step belief system for good. If so, then the Freedom Model Online Coaching is for you. Learn the addiction solution that has helped tens of thousands of people to solve their addiction for good and move on completely free from the trappings of perpetual recovery. You can work privately with a certified Freedom Model coach without having to put your life on hold, leave work and family. And again, you can do it without having to attend any group meetings or group therapy sessions. When you enroll in the Freedom Model online coaching program, you'll be assigned your own personal Freedom Model coach who will guide you through learning the Freedom Model in 12 private coaching sessions via video conference like Zoom or FaceTime. You will have three coaching sessions per week And you will also get 30 days access to the Freedom Model online program, which consists of more than 65 video lessons taught by me and my colleague and addiction expert, Mark Sharon. In addition to those video lessons, the online program also includes our 12-step deprogramming seminar series, a new Freedom Model quick lesson posted weekly, the monthly Freedom Model newsletter, the Freedom Model for the Family online program, and a two-hour live coaching session with Mark and me on the last Wednesday of each month. Go to thefreedommodel.org to learn more or call 888-424-2626 and start your journey to complete freedom today.